Good evening and welcome to Exit Theater Presents. My name is Christina Augello, and tonight we are proud and pleased to present for our live streaming show, The Arms and the Armament of Stephen of Blois, part two of the Anarchy Quartet, written by Stuart Eugene Bausel, featuring Fred Pitts as King Stephen of Blois, and directed by Nick Trengrove. Now, uh, this story takes place about maybe a thousand years ago, so I'm gonna read you a little history just to give you some background. Stephen of Bois was born around 1192 to Count Stephen and Adela of Normandy. Though his father died in 1102 when Stephen was barely 10 years old, he seems to have had a happy childhood raised by his adoring mother alongside eight siblings, one of whom, Henry, would become Stephen's lifelong champion and the chief power behind Stephen's push for the English throne. A legitimate grandson of William the Conqueror, Stephen was the chief rival of his cousin, the Empress Matilda, who claimed the throne of England following the death of her father, Henry I. Neither was a traditional heir, but both had equitable claims due to the death of most of the English royal court in the infamous White Ship Disaster of 1120. Having missed the embarkment of the doomed boat due to a bout of diarrhea, Stephen's claim was enhanced by his reputation for being even-tempered and amiable, making him a favorite with a significant portion of the general populace. He had also married his own Matilda, the Countess of Boulogne, at the time considered one of the wealthiest women in Europe, and backed by his brother, now the Bishop of Winchester, the trio spent 16 years battling the Empress for control of England during a period of civil war known as the Anarchy. By 1152, the war had been decided in Stephen's favor, and he was also lobbying the church to crown his son Eustace as the rightful heir when suddenly the Countess of Boulogne took ill and died. The arms and armament imagined Stephen on the day of his wife's funeral, only a few years before his own death at the age of 62. I don't think I can do this. No, I'm sorry, no. I shouldn't make this your concern, but it's talk to you or talk to them. Her, them. And I'd rather talk to you, yes, or God. Yes, I suppose there's always God, yes, but it doesn't answer, no. Neither do you, really, but yes, you could, yes. If you wanted to, yes. If I gave you permission, yes. Which I do, yes. So, if you would, just for a moment, will you? Listen, listen, my boy. What I want to say is, no, please, no. You don't need to do anything. Forget about answering. For the moment, just listen. That's all. 
That's all the king needs for you to do right now. Just listen for a little moment. Barely enough for the sun to finish painting the city. And I will get dressed and we will go do the thing. Yes, and then it will be over before we know it. Yes, and there will be food. Yes, and wine. Yes, and, and, and something with honey for you. Yes, something nice for you. Very sweet tasting. Yes, and, and for me maybe too. Yes, and Tilda will pour a little something for Tilda. Yes, and, and, and for all the rest of them. Yes, and, and life will continue. Yes, and, and life will go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to let you see me like this. Sorry to frighten you. Do I? <laughs> do I frighten you? <laughs> I do. I do, don't I? I do frighten you. <laughs> Tilda says I don't frighten flies that gather around the gilding's arsehole, but good God, you look so terrified just now. So what does that make you? <laughs> that makes you a fly. <laughs> do you like that? Do you like being a fly? Because that's what you are. <laughs> Little flies. <laughs> <laughs> My father died when I was young. Did you know? Yes. I was barely older than you. I was raised by my mother, who was not named Matilda or any variation thereof, which is something of a miracle in my family and on this planet. No, no Matildas for me until much later. In the beginning, there was only Adela, my mother. My beautiful, kind, strong, lovely mother, Adela. Adela, Adela, <laughs> it's beautiful, yes? Like a leaf falls off a tree on the first day of September to glide down upon the surface of a lazy stream that will freeze over by December, but isn't there yet. Yeah, one day in December, it all freezes over, but not on days when Adela was my mother. On those days, it was just lazy, slow, gurgling like a happy baby for a time. Short time now that I think about it. Moment, really. Snap of the fingers, yes? You know, Adela, 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 and then snap, Matilda. And more Matildas, my grandmother, my aunt, my wife, my daughter, my cousin. So many Matildas. One moment, September, a flower. A stream, a villa, the next, Matildamus. Oh, what's under the tree, Stephen? Oh, surprise! Oh, a Matilda. How thoughtful of you, baby Jesus. You sure there isn't any more myrrh? Maybe some frankincense? I'm not picky. Anything at all is fine. Nothing is fine. Nothing is fine as long as it isn't one more Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get my humour, no. And I frighten you, yes. Uh, you are, what, ten? You will grow out of it, fear. I did. More or less. Probably less. Well, the list got smaller. You know, yes, the list of people I was afraid of. But the names that stayed on that list... I grew to fear more, so I guess it balanced out. Oh, don't worry, it doesn't matter. And, and don't feel the need to say anything. 
not that you have, but in case you did, don't. I will talk until I run out of words. And then I will dress, and you tie the armour on with those little fingers, and we will go and do the thing. You will get a nice bit of something with honey. I will get the biggest goblet of wine this country has seen since the Holy Grail went missing. And we'll put a little bit for Tilda, you know, a small goblet, maybe a cake or two. And the rats will eat it before dawn. <laughs> but we can pretend it's her uh, <laughs> stopping by. It, like the old wives say the dead do. Yeah, Tilda will stop by to correct the balance sheets and to terrorise the maids once more and to say to me, her loving husband, fuck your tears, you weepy bag of shit, and get Eustace on the throne while you've still got breath in you, you fucking coward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, yes, I, I, I probably shouldn't swear, especially on a day like today. I beg your pardon, yes. I, you won't tell the bishop, right? Good boy. Oh, uh, Tilda, Tilda, Tilda. My astonishingly rich Tilda. Richer than the king. Richer than most kings. You know, I suppose I'm the rich one now. You know, rich with sons, thanks to her. And rich with money, also thanks to her. And saddled with a kingdom I never really wanted, thanks to her. And life goes... What's in a name? Is it about a name that's so powerful? When you give it to someone, or they give it to you, once a someone is dubbed Stephen, or Tilda, or Henry, Eustace, or Beryl, Wolfdong, or Telemachus, why is it suddenly not just one more person, but now your wife, your son, your king, your friend, your enemy, right? You, you, you understand what I'm saying, yes. No, of course, you are what? Ten. My boy, think on it. If Adela is a flower, then Matilda is a rock. Either one you land on, cling to, build your fortress upon, or one, you try very hard not to get hit by when it's launched at you repeatedly by God, I suppose. Destiny, the world, fate, oh, chance, your uncle, your brother, God. Probably should have just stopped there. The point is, it's not a very alluring name, Matilda. Neither is Adela, for that matter. Beautiful, yes, but it's hardly, it's delicate after all. You know, a leaf falling off a tree, flower falling off a tree, onto the surface of a lazy stream. Whereas, my mistress's name, quite the opposite. Damn it! Perfect for screaming in Flagonte, yes. <laughs> or if you need something. Ah. <sighs> I could have only married her. Can you imagine what this place would have been like? Demet, the ambassadors are boring me. Come do that thing you do where you make everyone smile. Demet, the ambassadors have left. Come do that thing you do when you make me smile. Demet, my will is gone. And I'm sad that they leave the flag and bring the whole thing. Demet, something for a little friend here. You know, something with honey and nuts, maybe too. <laughs> yeah, I see you. Even if I frighten you, I see that smile. You are not hopeless. Neither am I. Demet, come. Something for our little friend. Just sit with our little friend here. Demet? Demet, come, sit with me and my little friend. Let's smile when he smiles. Let's all smile together and be happy.
while we can. We are not hopeless, though it is December. No, 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 it, it, it is May, which is good. You know, it's soft ground, uh, easy to dig a grave, and the flowers are blooming, flowers in the trees, and the wind is soft, and you are reminded that life goes You know, I didn't even want this. They wanted it. Wanted it for me, I suppose. Wanted it through me, really. Tilda. And my brother, Henry, Bishop of Winchester. You've met him. Fat, yet somehow still handsome, yes. Stupid. Yet somehow still smarter than the king, smarter than most of us. Evil, yet somehow still chatting with God on the regular. Yes, yes, him. He's the one you can thank for all this. He's the one who said it was for the good of the country and that it would provide stability and preserve order and is therefore the will of God himself. Never mind what you swore to our uncle and his daughter, that other Matilda. This is what we will be doing. Thank you very much. Now shut up, Stephen, and go spend your wife's money on an army, because we both know, as an I, Henry, and she, Tilda, that you married her for the cash. So never mind what you swore to the dead king and his daughter. Never mind that you swore this before God himself. Never mind that God himself doesn't exactly forget these things. Let Henry deal with God. You, go raise an army. And that tells you everything you need to know about Adela's other son. And this one. Why is it that the harder I try to be what everyone needs me to be, the worse I am at being what anyone needs me to be? I think I tried to protest. At least I remember that I tried. I think I said, I will burn in hell for this, Henry. Yes, yes, I remember that. And then, worry not, brother. I'll burn for the both of us, said he. That's what bishops do for their kings. Oh, but he did not think he would burn in hell, even though I thought we both would. No, Henry was as confident then as he is now. And he was convinced that God was on our side, even if I didn't believe it. I mean, he kept pointing to things and calling them signs. Did you see that flower fall? Why, that's God telling you to be king. Do you hear that bird sing? Why, that's God saying that if the dead king's daughter takes the throne, he shall be very angry. No, Matilda, for England when England can have a Stephen. Oh, do you see that rainbow? Why, that's God painting in the sky, the gateway to your future glory as king. Got so that every moment of my life was a stone laid down on that road, and King Arthur wasn't as destined for the Holy Grail as I was for the throne of England. Never mind that the heir had already been named if God hadn't wanted me for England, he wouldn't have cleared the way, would he? I mean, it is true, after all, that I missed the whole white ship thing, which very much cleared the way. So who was I to argue with Henry? After all, God had saved me. You know, anyway, God did it quite mysteriously. But then again, that is his way, I've been told. I mean, we all have. You know, God works in mysterious ways. So mysterious that they sometimes seem like an afterthought or an accident. Certainly humbler twists of faith that have accomplished greater feats for lesser men. Still, to have missed drowning because you were taking a shit seems a little too accidental for me. But what do I know? I mean, I am not a bishop. <laughs> oh. You didn't know? But How? I mean, it's hardly a secret. Well, I mean, uh, you are... No, no, well, still, you're, you're what, ten? You are a page. 
which means you're at least six. And if you're at least six, then you've been there at supper and you've heard the songs, you know, all one, two, 20 of them that were floating around there for a while. More popular than the Arthur ones. Tilda was very much a fan of the one they usually wait till pudding to sing. Yeah. Good King Stephen missed the boat because he was a shitting. Everyone's dead but Stephen Blount. Something, something, knitting. No. Uh, quitting. Oh, no. Maybe shitting again? I don't know. I'm always quite drunk by the time that one rolls round. It helps me fake the laughter, which Henry encourages me to do. He says it's part of the reason why I'm so likeable to the people, especially compared to my rival. Matilda is very much a sourpuss, and it's important to be popular, especially to the Londoners. So I laugh along with the songs, as do my sons. So does Henry, loudly. And my wife did, very loudly, probably still. Anyway, yes, I was not feeling well, and they were all getting in the boat, and I was not getting in the boat, and, and then the boat launched, and then it hit the rock, and then they were all drowning, and really, you didn't know all this? It's not like it didn't get around. I mean, it's practically announced every night by the town crier. Steer in a blower, takes a dump, Miss Spectacular Massacre of Entire Royal Family. Truly you didn't know. Well, yeah, this all happened much before you were born, but it's not like a lot has happened since then. No? Well, now you know. That is how your king became your king. Because God stepped in, gave him the shits, and then the crown of England. And I watched it all. I even tried to help out, but they wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me. Henry. When I ran for a coracle to ride a launch out, you know, try to rescue any of them, I was stopped by my brother. His hand on my arm, a grip of suffocation. But don't you see, Henry, they're drowning. I remember that. And then... I do indeed, Stephen. His voice was as calm as the sea was not. All of them are drowning. <laughs> All of them but you. And I felt him write his name down on my future like a man must feel the devil write his name down for him when he sells his soul. It was like, 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 like a thing. Like a thing inside me was pulled out through the skin. Painfully, achingly so, but also slowly, incredibly slowly. Like, like how you walk through mud in a bog. Oh wait, well, no, no, how you walk when you're dreaming and you're being chased by something or someone terrible and you can't seem to run when all you want to do is run. That is what it was like. That's what it was like for Adela's sons on the beach that day, watching them all drown. One son sobbing. And one son, a stone, whose fingers viced into my arm while the empty hand opened and closed on a phantom crown we spend the rest of my life trying to get and keep. Open, close, hand into fist, hand again on empty air, on the future. My soul. Which is a lot to feel right after having shat three times the weight of England just across the dooms, yes? <laughs> Did you know we made a little boy tell the dead king, who's not dead yet, even though everyone else was, well, everyone but me and Matilda. Anyway, did you know about, about the little boy? No? Well, we did. We made a little boy, about your age, tell the king, who would soon be dead, that almost the entire royal court, including his son, who was supposed to be king after him, had drowned in an accident, which, although may have been an act of God, according to Henry, 
was almost certainly preventable. The kind of thing one looks back on and says, well, surely if the water had been calmer, or the boat sturdier, or maybe everyone else less drunk, then yes, that probably didn't need to happen, but it did. And we were so frightened, so cowardly, so ashamed that we made a little boy tell the king so that just in case he lost his mind, he wouldn't hurt one of us. Well, immediately. At the very least, we wouldn't be within grabbing distance or, say, close enough to be thrown out of a window. And we knew that he would not hurt a little boy. Well, we knew it was far less likely, and right we were, about that. If I remember correctly. Henry's idea, of course, most of the questionable ones are. You know the dead king was also named Henry? His daughter, the other Matilda, named her son that too. God! Too many of us with the same name! That is part of the reason why Tilda and I chose Eustace for the name of our son, of which I have three. A distinct advantage over my predecessor, the dead king. But even with sons to spare, I do not let Eustace get on any boats. One can never be too careful. And one must learn from the past. Yes? Honestly, the ship to save me from dying should be stitched on my flag. I mean, it's essentially set the tenor for my life, right? It might as well be my coat of arms. I can picture it. And now must you, as I describe my vision, like Arthur, sing the Holy Grail. There it hovers before me, the arms of Stephen of Blois, Silver Field, Azure Sun, Red Lion, Black Swan, and between them, always, Golden Crown, hovering, hovering between the earth and the sun. Hovering like a leaf that falls from a tree, but does not fall, not even into a lazy September stream, but hovering gracefully, perfectly, contentedly, over a brown stinking pile, just sort of puddling underneath it all, yes, just sort of dropped there like bread left on a windowsill to cool, you know, only runnier. Little brown streams like roots, you know, just edging down, down, then off. And the motto above it all the shit runs, life goes. You would not believe how heavy this is. I much prefer a helmet any day, but. At last, we are at peace, finally. Some of us, more so than others. And in peace, we do not wear helmets, except on important days where the people expect us to put on a show. Days like today. Days like... There is always more to do, yes? So, we do the thing, and then we get used to his own heavy metal hat, so that... When the time comes to do the thing for Papa, Eustace can replace him and carry on until the time comes for him to be buried and replaced. And then Tilda, up in heaven with Adela and the dead king, can finally be at peace. You think I'm being hard on myself. You think what I've described is ludicrous for a coat of arms. Well, why wouldn't it be anything else? Since the day I became rightful king, although apparently to just one out of three people, my life has been an endless barrage of shit. Except instead of shits, it's armies. Armies from the right, 
armies from the left, armies from underneath and above and everywhere else they could come from, whether the, the trunk containing my wardrobe, the alcove leading to the garden, my wife's left eye, the damn chamber pot, or worse, because there's always a worse, Wales! What a white ship of a country! And the latest, of course, is Matilda's husband from Normandy. The one everyone says is so good looking, by which they mean blonde, because his nose could have knocked me off the throne if he'd just lowered his head a little and charged hard. But no, the bloody unicorn had to bring an army because that's what they do, that is what they all do. And then David had to throw in his sword. David, King of Scotland. Yeah, well, cousins, distantly. I think. I don't know. At this point, I assume I'm related to everyone who hates me. It's expected. Still, all those armies and only captured once. The Battle of Lincoln. Where Matilda got me. Well, well, they got me. As in her and David and the rest of them. I mean, she couldn't have got me on her own. She likes to style herself as this she-wolf or whatever. But she's really both rather unimpressive and rather short. Not to mention rude, which stupid people think of as powerful, but really it's just bullying, yes? Still, she did get me the one time. But it was my Tilda who ultimately sprung me free with her money. There was also a train for Robert, Matilda's half-brother, who we captured at Winchester. But that was a rook for a king, really. <laughs> the queens really know when and how to bargain. So, thanks to my wife, I was back on the board and back at war, and I suppose I went on and won it, because here we are, but not her. Not Tilda anymore. You know, she wanted this for our son, Eustace. Oh, sure, she pretended she wanted it for me, but really, she wanted it for him. You know him. You've dressed him. He's the good-looking one of the three, don't you think? Even if he takes after his uncle Henry a little too much. But also his grandmother, Adela, who he never got to meet. <laughs> I see her in his eyes and in the smile. Yeah, there's definitely some Adela in Eustace. The other two, they're all right. They have their mother's eyes and the moustache, but she wore it better. <laughs> now she's dead. And the Pope, that idiot, is refusing to crown him, refusing Eustace, refusing me, refusing Tilda, not even in the grave yet. And what's it all for, I ask? I mean, what's it all for, my boy? You know, all this running around, all this grasping at nothing and looking for grails and, and shitting on beaches. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? They do. That's who. And me. matters because I care. Because I wanted to please them and impress them. Even though they go, and they all go. Tilda, Adela, the dead king. At some point, we all leave forever. Even you, my little friend. Even me, the king. Even Eustace, when he's king if he's king, and some king after him. At some point, we all go forever. It's just the way it is. It's what we learn from somebody, or rather with somebody, that's what we carry with us forever. Well, our forever. Life is 
what happens when you're taking a shit on a beach and everyone else who matters is drowning. Life is being held up and held in place until you aren't useful to the right people anymore. Life is outliving those people. Their lives are there useful and the need for you and waking up 60. And realise that you have to go to this funeral, otherwise you look really bad. And they really don't think that much of you anyway, do they? Life is realising that your wife should have married your brother. Now she's laying on a slab in a church, and Henry is talking to God, trying to get them both a good seat together. And maybe you too if you don't fuck up this last act. Life is realising you're actually going to miss the bitch and probably end up disappointing her and Henry and Eustace and everyone else, even Adela, even probably you, my little friend, before finally getting the drink, the grail dry. Life is realising all that and then realising that life goes Put this junk on me. Tie all the tires of the armor with your little fingers. Yes, we're putting on all the pieces, so we need to get a step on it. Oh, the sun has very much painted the city, and the people are no doubt gathering in their best clothes and terrible hats. So help me put this armor on, and then we'll go do the thing, and then something sweet for you. Something with honey and nuts and Raisins? <laughs> now I see the smile again. Don't be afraid. It will all soon be over. And something sweet for you. And for me... I heard a growl. <laughs>